Okay, the last two videos I made um, were about discrete random variables, and then this last one's continuous. Um, I guess my biggest, uh, I guess, hint or note about these is that um, for a continuous here, for your um, defined, like probably x is x and y is y, um, defined probabilities, I'm going to integrate over a region. And I think the most important thing before you even start the problem is to set up this region so you know what you're going to be integrating over. So for example, if you have the joint density function, define the probability that x is between a and b and y is between c and d, um, I need to integrate over, like if, if we look at this region, you know, maybe x goes from a to b and y goes from c to d, and this is the little area that I'm going to be integrating over my um, uh, my region of interest to find that probability. So the first thing I usually do is draw the picture of the region and then figure out what x's and y's I should be integrating over. And just like all of the other functions, density functions we've been looking at, um, over all real numbers this thing better integrate to 1 or it's not legal. Um, since we're continuous, remember that there's no probability at a point, so um, the probability x is a and y is b is 0, and all of these are exactly the same because it doesn't matter if you include or don't include the endpoint. Um, to find the marginal of x, you integrate over y's, and to find the marginal for y, you integrate over your x's. Um, expected value, you still have... Um, Again, once you find your marginal, it's just f of x times x, f of y times y. And now also the expected value of any function of x and y, we have the law of unconscious statistician there again, very nice. So be careful, there are things that like even in the next homework, you're going to want to say expected value of x, y. It's People want to say this is expected value of x times expected value of y. But there's no reason to believe that at this point. That's that's not a true statement. You would have to say that's the double integral of x, y times f of x, y integrated over your region of interest. So expected value of x, y, I just put that in um, according to my law of the unconscious statistician, and then here's my f of x, y. So be careful. There's a homework problem where that's very tempting to do, but you can do it if you have independence. But if you don't, um, this is not a true statement. So let's just do, I think this problem will show you, and then I'm going to do a whole page of practice problems because um, this is one of the harder sections. And I'll, actually, too, your, your quiz um, is not going to be an angel quiz. It'll be... Um, a quiz where you have to set these up and do a couple of them for this week. I think this is the best thing to do is practice this over and over. So um, I took this problem from 8.1. This is the joint density function, except I don't know the value k. I want to find k, so this guy's a legal function. Um, first thing to do, here's your region of interest. This is where my function's defined. So both x's and y's go between 0 and 1. So uh, I put 1 here, and I'll put 1 here. And x is greater than or equal to y. So here is the line um, y equals x. So if I want y less than or equal to x, I want this part here. Um, this should be my total region of interest. So when I'm trying to find k, I want to find k such that f of x, y integrates over this region that gives me 1. Okay, so um, part A, let's find, let's find out what K is. So if I set up my double integral, this is probably the hardest part. I like usually to go X's, let X's range and then define my Y's after I figure out where X is. So X is going from um, 0 to 1. So out here I'm going to say for X is from 0 to X equal 1. So choose any um, X in this interval. Let's just say this is a little X star here x star is going to go, in terms of y, it goes from here to here. And so it's going from um, y equals 0 to y equals x, because this is the line y equals x. So it's very tempting. A lot of people will say 0 to 1, 0 to 1 for your bounds. But no, for x is ranging from 0 to 1, y's range from 0 to x. And once we have that, I think the rest is pretty nice. So this is of xy 
um, inside the y outside the x. Oh, so um, you can use maple. I'm fine with that. Or um, the only reason I don't want to do this kind of is because I don't I don't give myself enough room. So integrate with respect to y. So this will be um, y squared. Um, let's see. That will be k over two x. And that goes from y equals 0 to y equals x. On the outside, I still have x equals 0 to x equals 1. And that should be uh, dx. Okay, so this is equal to the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 1 of, let's see, um, y equals x. So this will be k over 2x times um, x squared, and then putting 0 to 0, so this will be dx. So this is really just uh, x cubed. Okay, so this is the integral from 0 to 1. Let's see. Um, that was x cubed, so this should be x to the 4. Um, k over I'm sorry, it took me to do it here to get that. So x over 4, um, this will be k over 8 from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So put in 1, this will be k over 8. And I know this thing has to integrate to 1 if it's a valid density function. So this implies that k must be 8. Okay, so now I know what this function is. It's uh, f of x y is 8xy over this region. Okay, so let me just find one of the marginals and then I can find one of the expected values. Um, I'll find the marginal of x, so f of x. Um, to find f of x, I'm going to integrate over my y's, and my y's go from, um, in general, right, take any y goes from y equals 0 to y equals x. And then this is the function um, 8xy dy. Okay, so this is equal to um, y squared 4x from y equals 0 to y equals x. So this is equal to 4x cubed. And this is for, uh, at this point I'm just in x's, so 0 less than x, less than or equal to 1. Um, I can integrate to make sure this is a valid density function, but I think you can see quite nicely it is. So there's f of x, and to find, uh, maybe I'll do y since we're here, but expected value of x, just as a reminder, right? This would just be f of x times x dx over 0 to 1, and I'll get expected value. Okay, um, and I should get a number. I'm just not doing it because of space. So um, let's do f of y. No. Um, okay, it's a little bit shrunk there. So f of y is equal to, um, so this is a little bit tougher, right? So for any y, x's go across here. Right? So x's go from y to 1, 8xy dx, so this is equal to uh, x squared y4 from x equal y to x equal 1, so this is equal to, put um, 1 in there for x, so I'll get uh, 4y minus uh, Right. And then I'll put the y in for x here, so minus 4y cubed, and this is for 0 less than y less than or equal to 1. Find expected value f of y times y over inter interval 0 to 1. Okay, so um, I'll just do another, a couple, another video with a bunch of examples. 
Okay, the last two videos I made um, were about discrete random variables, and then this last one's continuous. Um, I guess my biggest, uh, I guess, hint or note about these is that um, for a continuous here, for your um, defined, like probably x is x and y is y, um, defined probabilities, I'm going to integrate over a region. And I think the most important thing before you even start the problem is to set up this region so you know what you're going to be integrating over. So for example, if you have the joint density function, define the probability that x is between a and b and y is between c and d, um, I need to integrate over, like if, if we look at this region, you know, maybe x goes from a to b and y goes from c to d, and this is the little area that I'm going to be integrating over my um, uh, my region of interest to find that probability. So the first thing I usually do is draw the picture of the region and then figure out what x's and y's I should be integrating over. And just like all the other functions, density functions we've been looking at, um, over all real numbers this thing better integrate to 1 or it's not legal. Um, since we're continuous, remember that there's no probability at a point, so um, the probability x is a and y is b is 0, and all of these are exactly the same because it doesn't matter if you include or don't include the endpoint. Um, to find the marginal of x, you integrate over y's, and to find the marginal for y, you integrate over your x's. Um, expected value, you still have... Um, Again, once you find your marginal, it's just f of x times x, f of y times y. And now also the expected value of any function of x and y, we have the law of unconscious statistician there. Again, very nice. So be careful. There are things that, like even in the next homework, you're going to want to say expected value of x, y. It's People want to say this is expected value of x times expected value of y. But there's no reason to believe that at this point. That's that's not a true statement. You would have to say that's the double integral of x, y times f of x, y integrated over your region of interest. So expected value of x, y, I just put that in um, according to my law of the unconscious statistician, and then here's my f of x, y. So be careful. There's a homework problem where that's very tempting to do, but you can do it if you have independence. But if you don't, um, this is not a true statement. So let's just do, I think this problem will show you. And then I'm going to do a whole page of practice problems because um, this is one of the harder sections. And I'll, actually, to your, your quiz um, is not going to be an angel quiz. It'll be... Um, a quiz where you have to set these up and do a couple of them for this week. I think this is the best thing to do is practice this over and over. So um, I took this problem from 8.1. This is the joint density function, except I don't know the value k. I want to find k, so this guy's a legal function. Um, first thing to do, here's your region of interest. This is where my function's defined. So both x's and y's go between 0 and 1. So uh, I put 1 here, and I'll put 1 here, and x is greater than or equal to y. So here is the line um, y equals x. So if I want y less than or equal to x, I want this part here. Um, this should be my total region of interest. So when I'm trying to find k, I want to find k such that f of x, y integrates over this region to give me 1. Okay, so um, part A, let's find, let's find out what K is. So if I set up my double integral, this is probably the hardest part. I like usually to go X's, let X's range and then define my Y's after I figure out where X is. So X is going from um, 0 to 1. So out here I'm going to say for X is from 0 to X equal 1. So choose any um, X in this interval. Let's just say this is little X star here x star is going to go, in terms of y, it goes from here to here. And so it's going from um, y equals 0 to y equals x, because this is the line y equals x. So it's very tempting. A lot of people will say 0 to 1, 0 to 1 for your bounds. But no, for x is ranging from 0 to 1, y's range from 0 to x. And once we have that, I think the rest is pretty nice. So this is k of x, y. 
um, inside dy outside dx. Oh, so um, you can use maple. I'm fine with that. Or um, the only reason I don't want to do this kind of is because I don't I don't give myself enough room. So integrate with respect to y. So this will be um, y squared. Um, let's see. That will be k over two x, and that goes from y equals zero to y equals x. On the outside, I still have x equals 0 to x equals 1, and that should be uh, dx. Okay, so this is equal to the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 1 of, let's see, um, y equals x. So this will be k over 2x times um, x squared. And then putting 0 to 0, so this will be dx. So this is really just uh, x cubed. Okay, so this is the integral from 0 to 1. Let's see. Um, that was x cubed, so this should be x over 4. Um, k over... Oops, sorry, it's a thing for the other to get that. So x over 4, um, this will be k over 8 from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So put in 1, this will be k over 8. And I know this thing has to integrate to 1 if it's a valid density function. So this implies that k must be 8. Okay, so now I know what this function is. It's uh, f of x y is 8xy over this region. Okay, so let me just find one of the marginals and then I can find one of the expected values. Um, I'll find the marginal of x, so f of x. Um, to find f of x, I'm going to integrate over my y's, and my y's go from, um, in general, right, taking y goes from y equals 0 to y equals x. And then this is the function um, 8xy dy. Okay, so this is equal to um, y squared 4x from y equals 0 to y equals x. So this is equal to 4x cubed. And this is for, uh, at this point I'm just in x's, so 0 less than x, less than or equal to 1. Um, I can integrate to make sure this is a valid density function, but I think you can see quite nicely it is. So there's f of x, and to find, uh, maybe I'll do y since we're here, but expected value of x, this is a reminder, right? This would just be f of x times x dx over 0 to 1, and I'll get expected value. Okay, um, and I should get a number. I'm just not doing it because of space. So um, let's do f of y. No. Um, okay, it's a little bit shrunk there. So f of y is equal to, um, so this is a little bit tougher, right? So for any y, x's go across here. Right? So x's go from y to 1, 8xy dx, so this is equal to uh, x squared y4 from x equal y to x equal 1, so this is equal to, put um, 1 in there for x, so I'll get uh, 4y minus uh, Right, and then I'll put the y in for x here, so minus 4y cubed, and this is for 0 less than y less than equal to 1. Find expected value f of y times y over inter interval 0 to 1. Okay, so um, I'll just do another, a couple, another, another video with a bunch of examples. Hi, I think this is where I stopped the other day before um, 
PDF annotator stopped working for me. So I thought I'd do a few more discrete joint distributions and then a continuous one since you haven't seen that and it's a little uh, it's a little bit harder to set up and to see exactly what area I'm integrating over. But um, so this is back to 8.1. This is um, problems from the notes. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I have a pen. Here is my joint density function. Um, it's defined for x equal 1 and 2, y equal 0, 1 and 2. It's discrete. I know it's discrete just because how the support is written. Nice um, exact values there, not defined over a range. Um, this is just asking the probability that the random variable x is bigger than y. And we can see in this case it's going to happen when x is 1 and y is 0 or x is 2 and y is 0 or 1. So there's just a certain number of points and I could just write out um, even instead of making up a double sum I can just say this is going to happen when uh, p of 1 0 plus p of um, <coughs> sorry uh, 2 0 plus p of 2 1 and this is the joint function for x and y so I just plug in um, 1 and 0 so that would be um, 1 25th plus um, 2 0 is 4 25th plus um, 2 1 is 5 25th so this should come out to be 10 25th okay so that's the probability that x is bigger than y um, p of x is the marginal function of x and I find that by summing my joint distribution over my y's. So my joint distribution is this. And I'm going to sum that from y equals 0 to 2. So this is going to be... Um, let's go back in the wrong direction. This is, let's put in y equals 0, so I'm going to get 1 25th. So, 1 25th x squared plus 1 25th. Um, plug in y equals 1, so that'll be x squared plus 1 plus 1 25th. Um, x squared plus put in there 2, that's going to be 4. So it looks like I have 1, 2, 3, 3 25ths plus, let's see, um, 1 25th and 4 25ths, oops, that was an x squared, um, plus 1 25th, so 5 25ths. And this should be valid for x's defined at 0 and 1, which actually doesn't seem right, does it? Because if I stick in 0, I get 5 25ths plus 8 25ths, which is not 1. So I have a mistake in here somewhere, right? When I plug in 0, I get this. When I plug in 1, I get this. And I plug in 2, I get this, 1 25th, 1 25th, 1 25th, that's 3 25th x squared. Hmm. So where's my mistake? Oops, I see it. This is for x is equal to 1 and 2. So if I stick in 1, I get 8 25th. If I stick in 2, I get 12, 17, 17, and H25. So yeah, this is a valid probability density function, or mass function, since it's discrete. Um, POI, same thing. I'm just going to sum that expression over my x's, and x's go from 0, oops, wrong again, 1 to 2. Um, that's 1 25th x squared plus y squared. 
So can somehow I just do this? Uh, I think I still have to write it out. Let me put in 1. So 1 25th, 1 plus y squared, plus 1 25th. Um, put in there 2, so we'll get 4 plus y squared. So this should be, um, let me see, y squared, y. so this should be 2 25th y squared plus 5 25th for y equal to 0, 1, and 2. Okay, if I stick in there 0, we get 5 25ths. And this is going to give me 7 25ths. So 5 plus 7, stick in there 2, 4, 9. So is this right? Let me stick, stick in there 2. That's 4 is 8. So 8 and 5 is 13. 13 and 12 is 25. Okay, yeah. So this is a valid. Um, mass function and then from here once I have p of y and I have p of x I could find the expected value of x I could find expected value of x plus y um, any function in terms of x, x plus y I could find now that I have x and y so um, sorry I'm writing this right on the page and I look so squished up there so let's just do one more discrete here and then I think I'll go to um, I don't know what this is asking uh, and then we'll go to continuous. So these stole four animals um, from seven sheep, eight goats, five burrows. I didn't know what a burrow was, so here's a nice picture of a burrow. Um, determine the joint probability mass function for number of shepherds. Number of shepherds. Oh, sheep. Shepherds aren't stolen, sorry. Uh, sheep and goats stolen. So I'm going to let uh, x be number of sheep stolen and y be number of goats. And let's get the joint. So p of x, y. This is just a huge hypergeometric. So there are 20 animals total, right? So 20 choose. Um, four animals are stolen, so 20 choose four. And now up here, I'm going to have three categories. Um, seven sheep, eight goats, five burrows. Um, X is sheep, Y is goats. And if I'm stealing four total, um, it should be four minus X minus Y left under there. Um, support, um, be a little bit careful. X can go from 0 up to 4, Y can go from 0 up to 4, but their sum must be less than or equal to 4, right? Because if I steal two of these, then I only have two left here, so I have to be very careful how to state this. Um, instead of, I mean, to find the marginal now, if you wanted to find P of X, you can sum this joint density function over your y's but I think it's easier um, just to say um, this is just a hypergeometric then in terms of x if you want to find the uh, marginal for x okay so um, this is going to look like 7 choose x 13 choose 4 minus x over 20 choose 4, and this is valid for x equals 0, 1, 2, up to 4. Um, same way for y. So instead of taking, I mean this one I can just think about logically, instead of taking this and summing over my x's or my y's to get the marginals, I can kind of see already what the marginals are. And one last thing, this is very nice, um, expected value of a function of x and y is um, just then we're using the law of unconscious statistician. I just put the function of x, y right here, and then I multiply by the density function of x, y. So um, I'll leave this one and then come back with the continuous one.